So this camera has given me a lot of frustrations over the couple of days I've had it. This is coming from eMeet. This is their S800. This is going to be targeted towards streamers and content creators. I think that this company is coming from the era of doing, you know, conference, corporate, you know, stuff like that for meetings and everything. And now they're, you know, branching out and putting their webcams in front of content creators and streamers. That's why they reached out to me for doing a review on the S800. So I've tried to record this video multiple times and Admittedly, one time I couldn't get it to go into 4K, so that was going to be my review. And then after fiddling with it for another couple of days, I was able to get it to 4K. And we're going to talk about the frustrations with that. But uh, notably, I have to talk about another 4K option out there that's coming in at the same price as this. Again, $150 for this. Onsbot has their own Onsbot Meet 4K with AI features, as well as having some features that admittedly is going to use more GPU resources, but you can put the artificial background blur, you can put images in your background, you can, you know, do the beauty features or whatever within their software in order to tweak the webcam. But again, it's going to use their virtual camera. Once you start fiddling with all that stuff, you're going to have to turn it on and doing the virtual camera is going to use more GPU resources. So that means if you're already using your GPU, to stream through OBS like I do wherever on kick link in the description by the way you're going to use obviously a lot more GPU usage with that and on top of that if you're playing video games it's going to even be even more but just for the base I would say look of the camera you can change you know the color temperature of the lights or whatever to match the lights that you're using you can change you know the color the saturation all that stuff the ISO and the frame rate which this one does not allow you to change you can change that in the software or whatever to dial in and it's going to be similar to what we see with Elgato's webcams and their camera hub software as well as what you see on cameras being able to change those settings and on top of that um, you can actually change the resolution in the software itself on those elgato camera hub you know webcams as well as on the onsbot webcams you can again change the actual resolution within the software to change it to 4k with the emeet series of webcams you actually have to not set the resolution in the software that's going to be a big drawback and i'm going to talk about more extensively in the software in a minute but with the emeet you have to go into obs and set the custom resolution or you have to go into if you're on a mac or windows you have to go into the actual camera app or wherever for the respective uh, ios and or os aware for the operating system and you're going to have to set select the camera's resolution that way to get it to 4k it's more intuitive to have it baked into the software. Like again, we see with the Onsbot and the Elgato. So that's a, a con right there against this webcam. And honestly, the web, the software wherever for the webcam looks like it's early 2000s, maybe early to 2010 or something like that era of software. So they need to put some more development time and let the software be uh, a little bit more baked in the oven before, you know, distributing webcams. And again, I think that's because they're coming from, you know, the conference area or something like that. They don't want too many tabs and making it really difficult for people who are maybe not as tech savvy, whereas streamers, typically the more that you use software and all the stuff wherever to stream or be a content creator you pick up on a few things and you become more tech savvy over you know the course of your content creation journey so me being you know a 25 bravo in the military or wherever when i was in i was already using you know stuff like this and software and computer stuff and everything so it was easy for me to you know finally get this into 4k but i know for the average consumer based on what i've seen for the onspot meet 4k and I'll leave a video of somebody doing a review on that in the description. And hopefully if you want to subscribe to the channel, I'll be able to compare, you know, the eMeet S800 to the Onspot Meet 4K in the future. I'm trying to get Onspot to send it out to me. If not, I'll purchase my own money and get to a review comparing both of these because they're, again, they're both competitive at that $150 price point. So again, TLDR, the software for the Onsbot or wherever, even admittedly the Elgato software is going to be a lot easier for you to control. And both the Onsbot and Elgato software, at least Elgato, I've never had it happen to me, but apparently you can save the actual um, settings or wherever to the webcam itself. So anytime you unplug it or you, you know, plug it back in, restart your computer, all that stuff, the settings are going to remain the same. And the Onsbot, the only thing I have to do in the software every time you know I restart my computer or I decide to plug it up is go into the software change the resolution back to 4k and that's it i never have to touch another setting with this actual webcam i have to go in and manually set 
all of the settings. So every time you restart your computer, anytime you plug the camera back in, you're going to have to set those color temperatures for your lights, like at 5600 Kelvin, which where I shoot in, you're gonna have to change the saturation, the hue, everything, wherever. There's no way to physically save profiles into the software and load them up at a later date or save it onto the camera so it stays with those settings. That's gonna be really, really annoying for anybody who's actually ever had the um, Logitech C920 line of webcams or just Logitech cameras in general, as far as their webcams go. Um, sometimes some cameras, webcams and stuff like that, you can't save any of those settings. So anytime you restart your computer, anytime you unplug the webcam and plug it back in, you're going to have to go in and dial, redial those settings. Anybody who had that, I would say frustration and was looking to upgrade from the C920 to something like this, um, you're gonna be happy with the 4K footage because it looks decent, but every time having to dial in those settings again, it's gonna be really annoying, especially if you're the type of person that puts their you know, computer to sleep or restart the computer every day and you're streaming every day or recording videos constantly, your streams constantly, um, having to go back in and redialing the settings, the only thing you can do as of right now is screenshot the settings once you dial them in the way you want and then pull up that that screenshot for reference when you're redoing this camera and like i said if you're going to get a 4k webcam at this price point there are going to be some drawbacks okay it's a webcam it's not going to look good as, or as good as an actual camera right but even with the onspot like i said meet 4k and the elgato you know 1080p 60 frames per second mark ii you know face cam you're going to have the option or at least a way to have those settings saved so like i said the only thing drawback with the, the tiny 2 or even like i said the onspot meet 4k is that you're going to have to go in and select the resolution to be 4k again that's vastly superior over this or whatever, just talking about software alone, not even picture quality or sensor size or anything like that. So again, it's gonna be really hard to recommend this webcam over that, knowing that that's out there, especially coming from Onsbot being 4K at this price point. Um, I do not recommend the Elgato you know, Mark II wherever, because I have the Mark I, and obviously the sensor is better than uh, the Mark I for the Mark II, but again, it's still 1080p, 60 frames per second. People you know, argue about, do you really need 4k and all that stuff that, that's up to you you know make your own decision but again at the price point of the mark ii from elgato versus you know the price point of this and the tiny two i mean the onspot meet 4k um i still would rather have 4k you know what i'm saying it's just because if i'm paying that much money already why not upgrade the resolution it doesn't make any sense and elgato not releasing a their 4k webcam at that price point when we're seeing companies like this and onsbot sent, uh, sending out webcams or wherever that are 4k around that competitive price point shows me right there that elgato's out of touch and anybody who's going to defend it is lost in the sauce so with that being said, do I recommend this webcam? Like I said, if you can get over those frustrations of having to reset and dial in those settings every single time, it, it, I don't imagine most people are going to. And that's not including the frustrations of getting this camera to 4K. Like I said, you're going to have to set the custom resolution inside the properties of your OBS scene or OBS, uh, you know, when you drag in the video capture source and you pick this webcam, you're going to have to go down into the properties and select, you know, the 4K. But the problem is, is that this webcam has to run on a USB 3.0 port. The problem that I run into is that the 3.0 ports are on my motherboard and even the module that I have for a 3.0 port extension that has its own separate power supply so that means it's not taking any power supply or any resources from the 3.0 ports that are on my pc already through the motherboard so all those 3.0 ports that i have or wherever on that module do not work with this webcam the webcam does not pick up that the fact that it needs to be in 4k it only picks up 1080p 30 frames per second every single port on the back of my motherboard all are 3.0 ports none of these 3.0 ports worked with this camera except for one and that was the one that i had my cam link uh from elgato that's in 4k plugged into and when i removed the cam link or wherever to another 3.0 port the cam link still worked and it still captured 4k 
and now magically this worked. So again, somebody who's just picking this up, who's not tech savvy, they're gonna plug it in, they're gonna plug it into their laptop, their PC, whatever, to a 3.0 port, and they're not gonna see the option for 4K. And they're gonna be like, how is this 4K? They're gonna think that the camera or he meet is just lying to them, saying that this is supposed to be 4K, and it's not coming in at 4K, you know, as far as the footage goes. And not to mention the frustrations, like I said, of resetting the settings every time you restart your PC. Now, again, the footage looks good for the price point or wherever you're getting that 4K footage. Obviously, in my testing or wherever, I could probably dial in the footage a little bit more. I have professional lighting and obviously the camera looks good right now. So trying to dial it in or wherever is going to be a little bit harder for a webcam and its sensor. You know what I'm saying? Even with the Tiny 2, there's some changes that I could do or wherever to make the webcam look even better. But in my personal opinion, it is 300 something dollar webcam. So it automatically is going to look better. So that's why I wanted the, the meat from Onsbox to be able to do a testing in the future or wherever to compare them because i think that's a more of a comparable you know webcam but overall like i said what emeet needs to do for their software is to push a firmware update and overhaul the software so you can have the option to select the actual resolution within the software not doing this half-baked thing where you have to go through obs to set the 4k up or going through your computer's camera software or wherever that's baked into the operating system to select 4k and then you know drag it in because like i said elgato's doing it through their software Onspot's doing it through the software. You know the camera's already gonna be 4K because you select the resolution in the software. It transfers that information over to the webcam. The webcam is now in 4K. So when you put that you know, video source into OBS or into Discord or Zoom or anything like that, you know that your camera's gonna be automatically 4K. Not doing virtual cameras, not trying to you know do some other things or wherever. Just make it pickable in the software. Like it's already coming at a hundred and something dollars. You know what I'm saying? The drawbacks is already going to be there because it's a webcam and it's a webcam sensor. It's going to be smaller than cameras. It's never going to look as good as an actual camera with, you know, inter interchangeable lenses and stuff like the Sony zv 10 that I use. So I already know that, but the footage that you get here looks decent, especially for this price point. And like I said, I didn't dial the settings in probably as much as I could uh, to get it to look even better than what it is as far as through in my testing. But again, the drawbacks is that the software is just it's too old, it's too red, it's too bare bones, you know what I'm saying? Especially coming in as a new product in 2024 when you have, you know, your peers doing it better and, you know, having those examples. So I would suggest Emi to look at the examples of, the, you know, the OnSpot software and the Elgato software and, you know, beefing up the software, making changes and stuff. And if they do that and they have a firmware update or something like that, and they want to contact me to take a look at it again, or at, in the future, one of the other webcams, you know, when they do those updates, that's fine. Or maybe they have a camera out there that allows them to save the settings wherever to the actual camera itself. If you want me to take a look at that, that's fine. But Emeet, what you got here is a really good camera at this price point and everything. But like I said, when you have competition at the same exact price point that I know that in the software, it's easier to set up the 4K and I don't have to go through and fiddle with the sliders or for bar for bar or wherever every time I restart my computer or do anything like that. And I know it's just going to the settings are just going to be saved to the actual camera. And maybe every now and then with the OnSpot software, I might have to go in and change the resolution back to 4K. That's going to be less cumbersome for somebody who's in the market for a 4K webcam at this price point. Again, I think bare bones based or wherever, even if you have to fiddle with the software and everything to get the picture quality to be back to perfect or pristine or wherever you want the settings to be, it's still going to look better than a Logitech you know any any logitech camera in my personal opinion um it's still going to be better than you know maybe those webcams that you go into walmart and pick up for like 50 60 bucks or something like that obviously being at a hundred and something dollars so it's still a good value camera and i like the price point and i like you know what's on offer here i think what's largely holding this back is going to be the software it needs to be it, it the software needs to be redone it needs that firmware update to at least bare at bare minimum have that software firmware update to make the camera 4k resolution within the software itself and mind you i plugged it into the same port that the onspot is sitting in in 3.0 port and the only one that worked for some reason was one 3.0 port on my computer that the cam link was plugged into and again i plug 3.0 ports or wherever for every single port on my motherboard and even in that module or wherever 
and none of them worked except for that one. So again, somebody who's not tech savvy, somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing with computers or something like that, especially, you know, maybe a brand new content creator or streamer, they're not going to go through this. You know what I'm saying? They're going to send it back. They'll probably pick up a Logitech one, maybe uh, God forbid a Razer uh, webcam or one of those Elgato Mark II webcams. They might not even know about the Onsbot Meet 4K, unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? So you, you have a market here. You have people who would buy and eat this up. You need to do a refurbish or refresh or whatever of your software. And I guarantee you, once you get that done or whatever, people will be selling this like uh, this will be selling like hotcakes, in my personal opinion, because people are looking for that crisp, clean, you know, 4K option. And like I said, a lot of them don't have the money to get cameras with interchangeable lenses or even get a camera that has, you know, a kit lens or whatever attached to it. At, at like five hundred dollars or wherever for you know the sony zv uh, e10 so again really good webcam really good components and everything uh it's just at this price point you need to come harder with that software and like i said you in my personal opinion i would pick the onspot meet 4k over it even though i don't have it like physically in my possession because i already know how the software works because it's the, literally the same software as the tiny 2 at $150, that's mind blowing, that's crazy. And having a competitor that's doing pretty much the same thing is mind blowing and, and it's great. You know what I'm saying? I want the camera to stay at the same price point and everything, cause there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the software's behind like, Even if you can't change, like I said, the resolution in the software, not being able to save those settings that you meticulously went over and set to the exact percentage, you're gonna have to screenshot it and do it every single time you restart your PC. And when you look at that, and then you look at the fact that they, the Onsbot meet uh, 4K, you're not gonna have to do that. And then on top of that, you throw in the fact that the, the Onsbot meet 4K is going to have the ease of use of turning on the 4K 30, wherever resolution within the software, and it takes like two seconds to do. And this one, like I said, the steps that you have to get it up and running, it should be a lot easier than that. It's 2024, come on. So. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end the video right there. Hopefully I was able to put it a little bit more concise and condensed or wherever. And instead of having like a 40 minute long video talking about this being all over the place, if you're interested in my review of the tiny two, it should be popping up on screen. And if you want to see any of the product reviews I have done on the channel, then, you know, click the product review playlist. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, liking the video pushes out the algorithm to people to see this video so they can get some informed decisions on their purchases when it comes to products. And with that being said, affiliate links down in the description to everything that was talked about today and uh yeah don't forget to subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys in the next one y'all take care have a squid day god bless you and yours deuces everybody much love